so I, I guess when I became an artist, I didn't really realize that I was really becoming dependent on it. Um, so now I, I can't uh, go for more than a couple of days without making art. And that, that was a slow progression. Um, but it's to the point now that when uh, when I vacation, I'm drawing everything around me. Um, and and so, so it allows me to sort of to really explore and to hold on to my world. I, it, everything, I think, starts with people. Uh, so, so what I'm largely representing, or have been since graduating, um, have been people. And, and the reason for that is that I'm a humanist. Um, so, you know, and, and it's difficult working within the sphere of figurative work because there's such a tradition there. Um, but for me, it's being able to value people and to, to single people out and sort of say this, this person's worth something. But the beauty in painting the figure, I, I think I come at it a little bit different than most people because I, I don't necessarily try to aesthetically make a nice looking figure. I try to represent the person as, um, as human as possible. So, so um, you know, if every part of their skin, um, whether it's smooth or whether there's some history there with scars or whatever, I try to represent all of it. So, so I try to make that as human as possible. And I think that the humanness is what's beautiful for me. So the fence mural was a really long project, um, <laughs> you know, both time duration and physical. Um, so I asked the community what they wanted on the fence and they wanted everything. So I thought, well, I have a, you know, a pretty big canvas to work on. Um, so to have sort of an overarching theme for the whole thing. So I went with the, the history of Calgary all the way back to the glaciers um, to present time. Um, and because the fence is in sections that allowed me to sort of parcel out each event with this overarching theme. Um, the process was I conceived of the whole um, theme uh, and I did all the preliminary sketches and then I spent a week drawing it out and I had a couple of volunteers paint it in once I drew it and then on the August long weekend hundreds of people came out and helped paint it. That fence um, gave me the opportunity one to have people from the community have ownership in their community uh, and invest in it which has you know long-term um, benefits um, and also it gave people the confidence to be painters. Uh, so I got to spread the possibility of art with hundreds of people. So back to my palette. All four of these paintings, but the record that she broke was the highest price paid for a painting by a female artist. Uh, so when you see all the bank pieces. So when I'm teaching, I'm forced to sort of reiterate all of my own theories. Um, and I think that's what makes me valuable as a teacher is that I'm in the studio a lot and so I'm going through certain problems and I'm coming up with a resolve and then I'm sharing that with the students uh, but it really sticks because you know I'm constantly talking about it and the students challenge me on everything so if something's not making sense you know because quite often what I'm thinking you know might not be clear in the moment um, a student will challenge me on that and I'll be forced to articulate um, or to really, you know, more in depth understand what I'm thinking. So that's what I get from it. Um, and then I, I think art isn't self-perpetuating. I think artists have to invest in their own communities for it to perpetuate itself because it won't do it on its own. Art's been so great for me. I think everyone else's lives can be a little bit better if they have some art too. As, as humans, we're going to be happier and have a better quality of life if we have arts in it. So I want to share that with people because it's made my life considerably better. My name is Mark Vasquez McKay and I'm an artist. <laughs>